Welcome back to Cord on Air. I'm Desi. I'm Malik. And on tonight's show, we have... On news, homecoming applications are now open. In sports, women's basketball is truly balling. In A&E, we have some Golden Globe talk. And Oscar nominations. And an interview with Lauren from Lambda Delta Sigma. All that and more on Cord on Air. So how you been? I'm good, how are you? Doing good, doing good. It's been a while. It's been a while. I haven't been in this set in like months. Yeah, I know. It looks different in here. It does. In a new city. New city. I think we got an upgrade. Upgrade, I and love it. Budget too. More money? I love money. Mm -hmm. good. I love money. How's your semester going? Um, you know, mm, eh, it's okay. You know, I'm living, living life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How's your semester? You know, busy. 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 I wasn't ready to come back, but here we are. We're here for a brand new season of Concordia on Air. New season? New season oh with God. new cast. New cast. New crew. New crew. What else has been going on? Um, you know, I just um, started my tour guide job. <gasps> oh, yeah. what's that? What's that entail? Um, so basically, I give tours to prospective students here at Concordia, and I just give them like the rundown on our school and how cool it can be and the stuff they can do here. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the tour? Like, what do you like to talk yeah. about the most? You know, surprisingly, it has to be Awesome Forum. Really? I surprisingly feel like I know a lot more about that, and I like use like big words. I was like, multi collaborative space, and they were like, oh, oh, Ooh. oh, and I said, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bringing in that big vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. What else have we been doing? Um, not much, you know. I'm doing choir again. It's okay. fun. Um, we're like gearing up for our concert that's next month or so, I think. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a lot of things happening on yeah. campus. Um, did you notice they got new garbage cans on campus? Really? Yeah. I did not know that. I noticed that. That was like one of the first things I noticed. I was like, whoa, look at these fancy garbage cans. Wow. Crazy things. Fancy corn school. So fancy. Oh my God. Can we talk about the pancake machine and <gasps> DS? Mm. Stop. Mm, Are you joking? So good. Literally the best part of my day. Like just pressing the OK button and just mm -hmm. slide right now. And you yeah, the conveyor anything. belt. It's really, really, really cool. It is so and cool. Cinnamon, cinnamon. Ooh, Ooh. cinnamon <laughs> waffles <laughs> machine. Tasty. Tasty. I haven't had it yet, but I probably should because it sounds really, really good. Yeah, upgrades. Yeah. Upgrades, yeah. people. We upgrades. love upgrades. And I'm happy they opened the Explore this semester. I've been oh, waiting. Yes, yeah. yes. Lots mm. of good food. Lots yeah. of good things happening in DS. Yeah. yeah. Should we see what else is happening in the world? Yeah. All right. On to news. Welcome to news. I'm Kay. Recently, an email was sent out to Concordia students about how the 2024 Homecoming Committee is looking for new members. These members will help organize and put on next fall's homecoming events such as the Johnny Home Dance, Bonfire, Alumni Breakfast, and more. Because homecoming will be taking place at an earlier time than previous years, the committee states that most of the planning will be done this spring during weekly meetings. Interviews are taking place until the 31st of January and the homecoming co-chairs co and Vanderlyn or Beth Vanderlyn can be contacted about any questions. As it's the beginning of the semester, there are some important dates to be aware of. First and foremost, tonight is the last day to add full semester classes to your schedule without a late registration fee. The $30 late registration fee will be applied for courses added for dropped after added or dropped after the established deadlines. Adding to that, the 1st of February through the 4th of February is also Concordia's Winter Wellness Weekend. So it's a good use of time to finish up some early assignments and get some much needed rest during this cold time of year. If you're currently interested in becoming a resident assistant for the 2024-2025 academic year, the deadline to submit your RA application is Sunday, January 28th. RAs are students that are considered the head of their dorm hall floors and they are in charge of supporting their floor members and making sure that rules are being followed in traditional halls. All applicants are, sent to are set to receive an email on Monday, January 29th about scheduling their interviews. For any students that live across campus in traditional dorm halls and or in the apartments, this is a reminder that dining services are still available to you despite the cold weather. In previous years, it's been noted that a handful of students decide not to eat at the dining hall due to having to travel in the cold weather or having to walk while it's dark out. 
If you live in Hallett or Erickson, the Skyway is a good resource to use to get across the crosswalk during cold days as well. Going hungry can impact your energy, mood, and create difficulties with sleeping, so eating me three meals a day is an important part to staying healthy and engaged with your classes. If any students are currently in search of employment, a resource to use is Handshake. The website is a way for college students to find job opportunities as well as internships. With Handshake, you're able to upload your information, resumes, and your area of living so you can find jobs that are close to you. You also have the option to allow the website to give you a weekly job roundup where job openings that pertain to your selected interests are emailed to you. To find more information and a link to the website, you can visit the Concordia page under Student and Alumni Career Resources. In an article by ABC News, the Center for Marine Sciences and Technology at North Carolina State University stated that it has saved 36 out of 109 cold-stunned sea turtles. Cold-stunned, also known as hypothermic stunning, is a condition where marine reptiles become very weak and inactive. Prolonged exposure to cold weathers can cause these animals to develop worse conditions no down the road as well. The, 30, the 36... The 36 surviving turtles are currently being treated and will be further rehabilitated until they are ready to be released into the wild once more. Now, on to a story about Homeward Animal Shelter. My name is Heather Clyde. I'm the operations director here at Homeward Animal Shelter, and I've been here 18 and a half years now. So our mission is pretty simple. It is a rescue, shelter, protect, rehome. Um, so our goal here is we are actually what's called a pound rescue organization. So there's three pounds locally that take in um, strays and abandoned animals. Um, those animals are held for three to five business days. And then once that time has expired and then no one has claimed them, we go in and take them and we find them new homes. Um, if we didn't do that, they'd be euthanized. Um, when I first started here, that was happening quite a bit um, the first year that I was here, 885 animals were euthanized in the local pounds. Our sole job is to make sure those animals are getting out of the local pounds alive. So we have volunteers that come every single day. Um, the cat volunteers take the cats out of their kennels, play with them, brush them, feed them treats, give them catnip, get them all riled up and um, give them a good time outside of their kennels. And our dog volunteers take our dogs out on walks or they'll play in our kennel area out back, play fetch with them or um, tag or whatever the dogs want to play, just kind of um, interacting with them. If you're looking to add an animal to your home, we always encourage you to look into adoption, but we know that's not an option for everyone. You may already have more than enough animals or you may not be in a good position um, to adopt. So if you can adopt, you can always consider volunteering to help out. Um, fostering is a great option as a temporary situation, especially for college students. We've been trying to encourage college students to foster because um, then you can have that companionship of an animal without the lifelong commitment of the animal and then of course donating whether that's financially or with supplies because um, we currently have 212 animals in our care so you can imagine the vet expenses of that many animals as well as the cost of food and litter and other supplies for those animals on a daily basis. Here let's see if he'll come sit in my lap. Come here. Come here. You can be on camera with me. So this is Beans. Beans is about three and a half years old now. Beans came to us um, when he was three weeks old um, with his brother, Pork. I named them Pork and Beans. Um, Pork was adopted when he was eight weeks old, but Beans had a similar personality to our old office cat, Plato, who actually passed away. Beans' job here is to help us with the dogs and making sure they're cat friendly. Um, he is able to determine pretty quickly if he feels safe around a dog or not, and that helps us when we're placing dogs to make sure we know if they're going to be able to live with cats or not. Um, but in addition to helping us out with the dogs, he's obviously comic relief and a stress reducer um, for the staff because they get to hang out with him and pet a cat, and that gets to hang out at the front desk. And he's the only um, animal wandering around the building that has free roam of the place.
and away, let's start with a recap on how the Cobras are doing overall. First, women's basketball has kept up their great record from the last time we heard from them. Their overall record is 12-3 and and 11-1 and in conference. The Lady Cobras were handed their first conference loss by Gus Davis on January 3rd with only four points of difference in their scores. From this game, the Cobras turned it around and have won every game since in the conference, which has been five games total, and hope to continue their winning streak tonight as they play McAllister at Memorial. Moving on to men's basketball, the Cobra basketball players are having a hard time finding the rhythm in conference play with their record being 6-5 to five in the conference and 10-6 to six overall. Key players for the men's basketball team has been Matthew Johnson and Rowan Nelson on both offense and defensive ends. This Cobra team will play Malachi... McAllister as well starting at 7:15. Now on to women's hockey. The women's hockey team is fighting their way through a conference, but that is leaving them with a conference record of 1-8 and 1. An overall record of 5-11 and 1. Key scores for the women's hockey team this year have been Jerrica Fries and Taylor Cope. The next time the Lady Cobblers are on their ice will be this Friday at the Moorhead Sports Center. Lastly, the Concordia men's hockey team. The Cobbers continue to have a positive season with their overall record being 9-7-2. The Cobbers add to their positive record by competing and winning against St. Olaf Oles with the score being 5-4. The overall record in conference for this team is 4-4-1. Main players for this year's Cobber team has been Isaac Hinkemeyer Howe and Mason Plant and of course the goalie Matt Fitzgerald. The next game for the Cobbers is on Minnesota Hockey Day in War Road at 5-30. Moving on to an interview with Lauren about Mixed Concordia. Hi. Hello. We're back. I'm Desi. I'm Sam. And, and we are here with Lauren to talk to me. Yeah. Thanks so much exactly. for being here today. Yeah. Lauren, how yeah. are you? How are you doing? Great. You know, Desi, I just really wanted to be like you. So we're just repping those. Winning. Yes. Winning is winning. Exactly. I don't know. I did not get the memo, nope. apparently. Mm -mm, but not at all. I think this looks a little bit now. Okay. Mm, no. Uh, no. Twinning is winning. Yeah. Let's be Whatever. real. Come on now. Yeah. So, Lauren, what have you been up to? Oh, you know, with the semester starting, just getting everything ready with my classes. I mean, I'm in the nursing program, so very busy there, but also very busy with stuff for the sorority with um, Mixed Concordia this week. Yeah, yeah, I hear Mixed Concordia is on Saturday, right? Yes, it is. Saturday at 7 p.m. in the Centrum. What is Mixed Concordia? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So Mixed Concordia is our annual fundraising event. It's the biggest fundraising event of the year for, the, for Lambda Delta Sigma, and it is money raised for the YWCA in our community. Um, it is a great pageant show. We have contestants that compete and have their talent, showing their Cobber spirit, you know, Cobber pride. And there's also a little Q&A portion at the end, so it's kind of like that little pageant questionnaire part, like, oh, world peace. But our questions are a little bit more, you know, light, just kind of getting to know our contestants. So you're telling me it's like the Miss Universe competitions here and then like Mixed Concordia is like right. It's right there, like right the under it. Thing. Yeah, you know, I, I think we might be even better. Well, even better. We'll have to see. I You'll know. Have to show yeah. up you to just see. have to come and see. Yeah. Exactly. What, what can people see? Like, what, do they, what can they expect? Okay. I am so excited for our contestants this year. We have four contestants, all from different um, organizations on campus, which is a great way to see all the different people and meet new people. Um, but I mean, I have seen all of the talents and all of the Cobber spirit. Oh boy, it is gonna be a show full of laughter and amazing talent and just comedy. You know, it's a really fun show. Yeah, we should, we should get our tickets. How, right? How can you get your tickets, actually? Because I have not yet. You haven't? I need to now. Uh, you obviously haven't so, stopped by our table in the atrium. I have not. So we have been tabling all week in the atrium in Knutson. It is a bright pink tablecloth. You can't miss it. Um, tickets are $5, and you need your ticket to enter, so don't lose your ticket. But we are tabling all week. Contestants are have sashes and are carrying around buckets that have their titles on them. You can buy tickets from them. And you can also buy tickets at the door. We'll be selling tickets at the door before the show opens at seven o'clock. So you, if you change your mind last minute, you're like, oh, it's Saturday night and I have nothing to do. I could go to the show. Right, yeah. yeah. What, what better plans than that? Right? There are none. Nothing. Yeah, how else can people get involved? Well, you know, if you want to become involved in the sorority, we always do recruitment in the fall, just a little plug there, but just really 
coming to the show, buying your tickets, or even if you can't make it to the show and you just want to donate to the YWCA donations, we will always take them. We are trying to beat our record from last year for how much we raised. So just come support, donate, show your love, support women and children. It'd be great. Yeah. So what do you expect to see um, for like the end goal this year? Well, my co-chair and I, we made a personal goal that we wanted to um, go past what we raised last year. So our amount goal that we're kind of looking towards is about $2,000 we want to raise for the YWCA. And fingers crossed we do it because that would just be so amazing if we can surpass what we made last year. Yeah, that sounds amazing. We definitely have to get on getting our tickets. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, what time is it out on Saturday? 7 p.m. in the Centrum. Can't miss it. There'll be decorations, some refreshments, good music. So, yeah. Yeah. Stop on by. The yeah. place to be. It is the place to be, be there Saturday or night. Be square. Mm hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank tonight, you for having Lauren. me. Yeah. We really appreciate it. I'm sure you're really busy with many other things with Mixed Concordia, so we won't keep you for much longer. Oh, oh it's all good. Well, thank you so much. Let's see what we have at Annie. Hi, welcome to A&E. I'm Reagan. And I'm Kaylee. And we're going to talk about some Golden Globe winners. And we're also going to be talking about the Oscar nominations. Yeah. So uh, both are very monumental. Both have some controversies with the Golden Globes. The biggest controversy was Joe Coy. Kaylee, you want to let everyone know who Joe Coy is? Joe Coy is a very interesting guy. And he seems to have a different relationship with women. That's not... That's, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For example, Joe Coy described Oppenheimer as being based on a 721-page Pulitzer Prize winning book based on the Manhattan Project and then said, Barbie is about a plastic doll with big boobies. And for those of you who have seen Barbie, it is... It's not quite It's not that. quite that. <laughs> it's quite the... Quite opposite, the opposite. Actually. Yep. Um, it's about um, it's about celebrating women. Uh huh. And uh, how far we've come, and yeah. uh, basically women's relationship with their mothers, and it's just about women needing to realize that they are just as important as men are. And he diminished that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. So that says quite a bit about him. So Reagan, do you want to do you want to demonstrate what you um, what, your interpretation of him? My interpretation of Joe Coy at the Golden Globes was it can be summarized in this: <clears throat> Women, am I right? <laughs> that's yep. Joe Coy. I mean, that's all he really is. And mm -hmm. he made like an apology, saying. But I only had like a few weeks to write the jokes. Mm -hmm. Like that's why they weren't that good and so like offensive. Ah, hate that. Ah, uh, when in reality you could really write everything and better in like less than less a few than weeks. a few weeks. I even once saw a video where this guy was like, I gave myself ten minutes to write better Golden Globe jokes, and I like watched it and the jokes were funnier than what mm -hmm. Joe Coy did. Another thing he did, for all my Swifties out there, um, he said the difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL, at the Golden Globes we have fewer shots of Taylor Swift. And then the camera panned over to her, she just took a drink of her glass and just was super sophisticated about it and just kind of brushed it off her shoulder. But the Swifties were enraged. Mm -hmm. Have any of you are Swifties out there? Sorry. You understand, he yeah, yeah, he's not, he's not that great. Oh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. yeah. Woohoo. So let's get past Joe Coy. We don't need to think about him anymore. Nope. He's, he's, a, he's irrelevant. Yep. We don't need to think about him. Yeah. But what we do want to think about and talk about are some of the notable wins from the Golden Globes. So first um, is the best actor and actress for a comedy series. Um, both came from the television series The Bear. Best actor was Jeremy Allen White and best actress was Ayo Adebri. 
Um, Kaylee, have you seen the bear at all? I have not. Have you? I have not, but I well, I've seen like one episode and I've been impressed. It's it's one of those shows where you can just like get behind. So go them, they're great. Uh, the next little duo uh, for actor and actress for best drama series was again both from the same show, Succession. Very big show. Have you seen it? I have not. Oh, I haven't either. Um, but the oh. actor, best actor, was Kieran Culkin, who, if you don't know, is Macaulay Culkin's younger brother. He was the kid with glasses in Home Alone. Fun fact. I did not know that. Well, you learn You'll something I'll, new. You learn every something day. new every day. So, and then uh, the best actress was Sarah Snook from Succession. Um, go them. They're great. The Best Actor and Actress from a Comedy Film. Uh, Emma, Emma Stone won for Poor Things. Have you seen it? No. No. It's high on our list. We're going to watch is. it. We're going to watch mm -hmm. it. We promise. Um, and then best, best Actor is Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers. Also high on our watch list. We it watched is. the trailer last night. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, and they used a special camera, so it looks like really old school. Mm -hmm. Very excited to watch it. It reminds me of The Breakfast Club. That's yes, the vibe it's very the trailer like gave 80s me. Very like 80s camera yeah. moment. Um, and then we have Best Actor and Actress for a Drama Film. Uh, Killian Murphy won for Oppenheimer. Big movie. Uh huh. Have you seen it? <laughs> no, I have not seen it yet. I have but also it is, uh, not seen it. It's also on the list of movies to We're see. We're college students. We don't have time. No, we genuinely we do not have time. Um, and then Best Actress. This is a big one. This is yes, a really big one. This is very, very Lily big. Lily Gladstone won for Killers of the Flower Moon for Best Actress. Mm -hmm. And she is the first Native American to win a Golden Globe. Um, and then I believe I have one more special one, and that's Best Director, uh, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to those who won. There are much, many more winners, but those were just a few of the notable ones. Uh -huh. So let's talk about the Oscars. Yes, moving on to the Oscar nominations. Jumping off of Reagan, not only did Lily Gladstone win Best Actress at the Golden Globes, she also is the first to become the first Native American actress to be nominated for Best Actress for Killers of the Flower Moon, which is a very, very big deal, obviously. Yes. Um, and then I'm gonna jump back over to the Barbie area really fast. Um, Controversy. Yes, so both Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie were not nominated for anything no. for Barbie, but Ryan Gosling was. Yeah, for Supporting Actor, Ryan yep. Gosling was nominated. He also had his song, I'm Just Ken, nominated, which go him. We love Ryan Gosling. He's yeah. so cool. He is. And, and he, just, he, yeah. he even stood up and was like, stood up this is winning. not okay. Like, I mean, not great. I was watching it when he was nominated for his song. The shock on his face was very evident, and it just spoke many words. Yeah. And I was like, that man is one of the few who understands so, so true. Yeah. So true. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just, it's a little disappointing for a lot of women in the industry and just casual women like us on the street. Just some, um, just like college girls, casual women. We're, yeah. Woohoo. Woo. Yeah. Um, but I think we're very excited to see who wins. We're obviously disappointed that Barbie wasn't nominated for many awards within mm -hmm. like Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie. Although there was a supporting actress nomination for Barbie, America Ferreira. Is yes, it was America Ferreira um, for best supporting actress. Yes. Which um, go her, she did really well in the movie. Yes, Are she did. Are there any other Oscar things? Yes, there's one more. Jumping back to uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. At the age of 81, director Martin Scorsese was nominated and Fun fact, he has more nominations than anyone alive, which is pretty cool. And he also is the oldest person to ever be nominated for an Oscar. Which and is very impressive. It's very impressive. Yes. And he's still alive and thriving. So thriving is yeah. yeah. He's doing his thing. I can only hope to be like him. It's my, my dream in life, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll to see. Be old and thriving. <laughs> Woohoo! That's yeah. a quite the dream you've got there. 
Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for watching Cordon Air and A and E with us. Um, tune in for the Oscars. It should be a good time. Yep. Watch movies and be cool. Be super cool. Yeah.